and Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking with you today about the second half of April and the solar eclipse that we have in Aries on the 19th or 20th, depending on where in the world you live. Now, eclipses are always powerful, they're always intense. This is a particularly powerful eclipse um, that is going to resonate not only for six months after the 19th or 20th of April, but also through 2024, because Pluto, in its um, transit back to the end of Capricorn, is going to keep on aspecting and, and triggering it. It's going to keep squaring it. So re-energizing, reactivating what this eclipse is about. It is also about another major timeline jump. We're jumping timelines all the time, but the solar eclipse is, is for sure going to initiate um, another potential for that. So very strong. So this, um, it's interesting that we had a new moon in Aries just a few hours after the equinox on the 21st of March. And here again, we have another new moon in the form of a, a big solar eclipse on, again, in Aries, 29 degrees, 50 minutes of Aries within 10 minutes of the end of Aries. For, so for sure, this is the critical degree, the anoretic degree, and I'll be talking about what that means in a moment. So it happens on the 19th of April, it happens at 9.12 p.m. Pacific, and then 5.12 a.m. UK time the next day on the 20th. Now, this has incredibly dynamic energy within it. We have um, five orbiting bodies. If we include Chiron and Eris, we have uh, five orbiting bodies in Aries. Aries is the sign of action, dynamism. Um, it's very initiatory. It's getting things moving. It's fiery. It's primal fire. And don't forget that the ruler of Aries, Mars, is still what is technically out of bounds beyond the normal 23 degrees north or south of the ecliptic until early May. So the whole of April, um, it's going to be out of bounds. So this second half of April and through May, particularly the first half of May, particularly the first week of May, I think is going to be extraordinarily volatile, intense, turbulent, and bring in a great deal of change. So firstly, personally, see where 29 degrees, 50 minutes of Aries falls in your chart. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download a free birth chart from my website, pamgregory.com, then go to the link below and you can get a two-part video series that you can use ad infinitum for every update to help you understand what each update I, I, I film, I publish, means for you in your life. So don't forget to set a new intention. This is a very big one very big new beginning, big new moon, solar eclipse. It's also a very rare solar eclipse because it's what is called a hybrid eclipse. And this only happens in 3% of cases of eclipses. So it begins as an annular eclipse. An annular comes from the Latin annulus ring, a ring of fire around the sun. And then it uh, moves to a path of totality across Australia, East Timor, Eastern Indonesia, uh, covering Papua New Guinea, where we've just had a very big earthquake, 7.2 magnitude. It then becomes partial over a much bigger geography, Southeast Asia, East, um, um, in the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the, the Philippines, New Zealand, and Antarctica. So big geographies, and wherever an eclipse path of totality falls, those or some of those geographies tend to come into prominence, come into the news in some way in the coming months. So we will see how that works out. But this Aries energy is extremely dynamic. As I said, it's all about new starts. It can be very assertive, angry, warlike, particularly because it's the final degree. And the critical degrees of signs, that last degree of the 30, tends to express in, in a collective way, in a less positive way. So we may well see some warlike behavior out in the world. We can diffuse that. We can diffuse that by each of us staying in peace, using it for our courage, our bravery, or our autonomy, our independence, this very strong sense of individuality, 
um, knowing that we have a, a center of power which is peaceful, strong, solid, and consistent. It also is about self-sufficiency, this Aries energy, and that's going to become stronger as well once the North Node moves into Aries to reinforce that in July and stays there for 18 months. So we've got this interesting uh, mix of the Aries energy and the Aquarius energy with Pluto having just begun its ingress into Aquarius. So this is really about, uh, Aries energy is about I am. People with Aries emphasis in their chart have a very clear sense of who they are. They just are. It's very simple. It's not complicated. It's very straightforward. They've just got a very clear sense of self. And therefore, through this solar eclipse and also with the Aquarius emphasis as well, we are going to get a much clearer sense of who we are, but also how we fit into the community, we fit into the whole, we fit into the group and what unique gift we can offer. And just really think, particularly because this, this eclipse is at the final degree, how much have you changed? How much have you really grown in understanding your sense of self, particularly over these last three years, I would say, and maybe even more so in the last few months? How have you really stepped into that role of individuality? Because I think that's a, this solar eclipse will help with that too. Now, solar eclipses, in fact, all eclipses, but I think particularly solar are like wild cards. They um, can jump us back onto um, our correct timeline, our path of destiny. Um, there's often a discontinuity. It's almost like a, a, a Uranus transit. There's a jump, something unexpected, something comes out of the blue. If this solar eclipse is falling on your sun, your ascendant, or your midheaven, you could be jumped into prominence. Somebody gives you an opportunity or promotes your work or whatever. There's a jump. And this is a very positive solar eclipse for our future in that whenever we have an eclipse, the moon has to be close to either the north end of the nodal axis or the south end. Here it is close to the north node, um, north node, which is um, in early degrees um, here of Taurus about to back into Aries. And so this is very positive because the north node is our future collective destiny. So we've got a very clear message here of this is another start point, big new moon, conjunct the north node, another big episode, another big start point in our collective future and really do see it in this way. But inevitably with eclipses, they bring about permanent changes. So do Pluto aspects, actually, we've got a very strong Pluto aspect, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but there's often an ending that opens up the new beginning. There's often an ending that opens up the new beginning. Those endings will become stronger as we move into the lunar eclipse on the 5th of May. So this period of time, late April, early May particularly, I think is going to be incredibly powerful, this ignition point of starting this new episode for humanity and our evolution. We know we are now, just very recently, as of the 22nd of March, as I've talked about in other videos, we've entered this second phase of our evolution because we've earned it, because our human consciousness has now raised high enough for us to step up to stage two. So see this very positively. Now let me show you the chart, let me share the chart. So as always, I set this for England, this is where I live. Um, a couple of people have written to me because we're now on British summertime and said, I've got the wrong time here. Well, actually, I haven't because 412 is GMT. And remember that we spring forward with British summertime. So it's actually 5 uh, 512 on the clock. What's most important is not the time, of course, but uh, the exact conjunction of the sun and moon because they're all always completely exactly conjunct at a new moon or an eclipse. So here we see the planets I've been talking about. I haven't added in Eris, but Eris uh, is at 24 degrees of Aries. It was too much of a squeeze here. So with Eris, we have these five planets in the very dynamic sign of Aries. Now, you will see that Pluto is in an out-of-sign square to the eclipse. 
you can imagine if if Pluto was still at 29 degrees of Capricorn, it's easier to see that 29 of the Cardinals, 29 of Capricorn to 29 of Aries, but it's still a very tight out of sign square. And as I talked about in Pluto squaring the nodes, this is now in this, this strong T square to the nodal axis of four of Taurus and four of Scorpio. So this is our ignition point, as I say, that is going to bring about um, incredible permanent changes in our social and political structure. Pluto is the plant of death and rebirth. This T-square with Pluto is going to last all of this year, or at least till November. It's most intense now till mid-July. So we are going to see a lot of change, I think a lot of corruption come to light, a lot of demolition. 2023 is a bigger year of demolition as I see it. 2024 is a bigger year of rebuilding, but that is not to say there's no building of new earth in this year because there absolutely is and it is moving apace. Because the sun and moon, the, the solar eclipse, um, they are right at the end of Aries, within 10 minutes of the end of Aries, there's a sense, I mean, Aries is always speedy energy. There's a sense of urgency. Come on, come on. There's no going back. We're right at the end now. There's no going back. It brings about great emotional intensity, particularly if you have any hard aspect between Pluto and the moon, great emotional intensity. And there's a feeling of end of tether. The collective is at the end of their tether, kind of this far and no further. This far and no further is the feeling I get with that solar eclipse being right at the end of, of Aries. So endings, beginnings, opportunities, jumps, wild cards. This is going to accelerate again the old world collapsing. So we also here have, with the Aries energy, a lot of potential impulsivity, overreactivity, be careful personally if you know you you, you want to jump. You think somebody's being aggressive and you want to jump um, in a very fast retort. Just take a breath. Take a breath and step back. They may not have meant it in that way. They might have had a really bad day. You know, just just don't be too quick to jump in because remember also as well as all of the, these orbiting bodies in Aries, the ruler of Aries, Mars, is still out of bounds. And will continue to be, as I mentioned, until early May. So it's got this slightly out of control feeling. So bring it back to your courage, bring it back to your center, bring it back to your um, pioneering quality, your initiatory quality and your sense of autonomy. That's a very positive expression of this. So we also have here Mercury and Uranus, very tightly together in a conjunction. This can always be shocking news, shocking news, revelations, truth coming to light. Um, Mercury also starts to move retrograde within a few hours of this solar eclipse. In Taurus, that could bring up um, a lot of information about the financial world. And I do very much expect to see turbulence, volatility of some kind in the financial world, Taurus, banking, money, currencies, anywhere from you know the second half of April through May, particularly that first part of May, is incredibly strong. Incre now, I don't know exactly how that's going to manifest, but it is going to be turbulent. Um, it's another part of the old world collapsing. So be aware of that. Truth, shocking news coming to light. The other aspect which is important here is that Mars, ruler of this solar eclipse, is in Cancer. In Cancer, it operates as a, as a fierce protection. You absolutely want to protect those you care about, those you love, your family, you know, you're very quick to defend them. And it's in a square to Chiron. Now, Chiron is in Aries and again, ruled by Mars. Now, everyone has Chiron somewhere in their, their birth charts. And if we look at it in a personal sense, this usually represents the original wound. So we have an original wound somewhere, depending on the sign and the house. Aries, as I've mentioned, has a very clear sense of I am. So when people have Chiron in 
Aries, there's often a sense of I don't have a right to exist in early life for whatever reason. There's a wound to the I amness, the sense of self. But always with Chiron, we are meant to turn it into leadership. We turn that whole picture around. I believe Gandhi in India, um, you can clearly see culturally why he might have had a, a sense of I don't have a right to exist, but he turned it around into great spiritual leadership. Chiron is always, of course, about uh, woundedness, sickness and healing. And in this square to Mars, we might be feeling quite angry, some of us, around health issues or around truths coming to light around health and we have this this quick reaction we want to defend those we care about this great emotional intensity that's coming through in this solar eclipse the other thing which i think is incredibly positive is well just before i get to that actually um eris as i say is at 24 of aries and jupiter comes into an exact conjunction on the 24th of april so Jupiter will expand the energy of Eris. Now, Eris is the sister of Mars. She's warrior energy, female, raw, radical, uncompromising, very much operates with natural war, not man-made law, and she absolutely fights against injustice. Everybody has to be heard. Everybody has to have a voice. Everybody has to be included. So she fights very much against any inequality in society, but she's a feisty, rebellious energy. Jupiter is going to expand that. She's the street fighter. So we could expect to see a lot of collective assertiveness, let us say. Collective assertiveness with a focus on equality, justice up in this, around this solar eclipse. Very positively and very interestingly, because of course, um, uh, this is a slightly wide square, but uh, Pluto is in an out of sign square to Eris as well, but it's it's for sure in this square to the eclipse and to the nodal axis. So this is like the kind of almost the collapsing end, you know, the demolition of the old world end of this seesaw. I'm imagining this almost like a seesaw. But at the other end of the seesaw, we have the wonderful dwarf planet Homer at 030 of Scorpio. She just entered Scorpio recently in November. Remember, she has a very long orbit, I think 283 years. She will be in square to Pluto from now till 2028, till 2028, another five years. But she is one of the most powerful archetypes we have for New Earth. And before I get to talking about that, I think in Scorpio, what she's going to do, because Scorpio is very much, particularly the South Node being in Scorpio, it's almost about lancing the boil of toxicity. That's how I think of it, lancing the boil of toxicity in society, in our financial world, and also in our seas and oceans and water. I've talked in other videos about the huge importance of water coming up right now, Saturn having moved into Pisces, Sedna changing signs and therefore being emphasized and her whole myth of the Inuit goddess of um, the Arctic icy seas there, um, Homer moving into Scorpio, the deep uh, water sign, a lot around water, but Scorpio is very linked to toxicity, and, I, and my sense is because Homer is a very regenerative principle, in some way, the seas and the oceans, which have been very polluted by humanity, in some way that I can't fully explain, I'm just intuiting now, will be cleaned up faster than we think. I, I absolutely feel that. They'll be cleaned up. Far. It's not going to take decades and decades and decades. So there's a lancing of the boil particularly I think this year. So Homer, I'll stop sharing here because hopefully you've, you've kind of grasped this seesaw um, aspect, but Homer is, as I say, one of the strongest symbols for New Earth because in, in, in one sense, she has an incredibly creative, regenerative aspect to her archetype. She was able to birth babies from all over her body, just not even the regular places. She could transform herself from an old crone to a young maiden. So I think uh, she's one of the um, dwarf planets that, that, as well as Pluto moving into Aquarius, that says we're going to reverse our aging and uh, become younger, become healthier. So she could 
summon wild wild food from the land and the seas with her majestic the makala even when they'd been laid waste so this incredible regenerative principle that is so powerful for new earth and linked to that in another aspect of her archetype which i don't think i've mentioned before this is her aspect as the fire goddess pele the fire goddess who resides as fire within the volcano in Hawaii and actually produces via the volcanic eruptions and the lava produce the eight islands of Hawaii. She actually produced them as new earth, new islands. And that's another strong aspect of understanding her link to the new earth. We may, through the extreme earth events, Uranus is still in Taurus till 2026, um, we are going to see a lot more um, extreme earth activity very unstable geomagnetics, as we know, new land may be produced in various places around the world that will act as bases for new earth. The other aspect of the archetype of Homer, which I talked about in my conversation with uh, Kelly Hunter, is it so it so fits with, with Pluto moving to Aquarius, out of Capricorn into Aquarius, because in the myth, Homer, Homer's partner, um, on the island where they lived, was taking some bananas from the wild to eat and bring back to the family. And in indigenous cultures, they have no sense of ownership of, you know, this is mine and not, not yours, etc., or the other way around. There's no sense of ownership. So he was just taking the wild bananas, as the indigenous people did. But they had extremely authoritarian rulers at the time who caught Homer's partner and were going to put him to death. We're going to put him to death for taking the wild bananas. And Homer was distraught when she heard about this because the authoritarian rulers had weapons and they were very powerful. But she got together with her community and also called in all her spiritual help, angelic help. And with all of that very simple help, energetic and spiritual and community, they overcame the authoritarian leaders and turned the island back to what they call Pono. P-O-N-O, -O, right relationship with nature, right relationship with the earth, harmony, fairness, balance, justice, everything in its right place. Nobody taking more than they need, but everybody having enough. And that is really beautiful. And when I talk about these Kuiper Belt objects, you know, they really take us back to the divine to the spirit world, to this interconnectedness with nature, the earth, the cosmos. We are completely interwoven with all of that. And we've just forgotten, you know, in our modern lives, living in cities and working in offices, we've been so cut off buying packaged food. And we've been so, so removed, really, from this sense of magic this magical inter interconnectedness with, with all that is, the cosmos, the galaxies, the energies, the elementals, all of it. And so Homer is very much part of that myth because she was a shaman as well. She had a, a deep instinctive connection to the earth, understanding the earth's rhythms. And this is what we are being led back to with the Kuiper Belt objects, this beautiful it just is so fine, it's so ethereal, it's so high, it's this this higher octave of consciousness, which I often talk about, which is just so different from the collapsing 3D scenery. It's just so different. So be aware we're moving into some months of 3D collapse, chaos, going to get louder, going to get noisier, going to get more and more hollow, em empty. Just know that. And that is such a different path. It's such a different fork in the road if we put our attention there to the magic of the cosmos. And I'm going to be talking a lot more, I feel, about, about that in the months to come because we are magical beings. We are going to go back to this Lemurian balance in New Earth of, of this sense of oneness and being connected to everything in Pono, in harmony, in right balance, in right relationship. So know that you are a powerful co-creator with all of this Aries energy, the I am, this strong sense of autonomy, sovereignty, power, and just blaze your light out to the collective.
infect the collective with your light. So much of this time is about the light. We know, we know that, as I say, from the 22nd of March, we are now into this second stage of human evolution because we've earned it, because we've raised our consciousness enough to meet that. Just really feel that we now have momentum and blaze your light out there. That is one of the most powerful things you can do. Sitting at home, on your sofa, or in your local park, know that that is your purpose in these evolutionary times. So I hope that's helped you. We, this, is, this is a big, big time. We all know it. We can feel it. Uh, we can feel these shifts of energy, the, this morphing of reality that's starting to happen, moving more into dream time almost, um, more and more as we move through these coming months and years. So if you'd like more information about my books, my videos, my long monthly newsletter, check out my website, pamgregory.com. And thank you for listening. Don't forget to set you new intention for this very powerful solar eclipse in Aries on the 19th, 20th of April. And God bless. Bye for now.